ever feel like ah, you're living in some kind of digital spy thriller? Mm-hmm. Today's deep dive is going to take that feeling to a whole new level. Yeah. Because we're talking about hacking groups, right? But these guys are breaching systems so secure, they make Fort Knox look like uh, a walk in the park. That's right. Air-gapped systems, right? Yeah. So these are computers. They're completely isolated from, from any network. Think of them like digital vaults. Yeah. Right? Just locked away from the outside world. Exactly. No internet, no outside access. They're designed to be, like impenetrable. Right. Governments use them. Critical infrastructure relies on them anywhere with super sensitive data. They don't want falling into the wrong hands. Mm-hmm. But... And there's always a but. Always but. There's a hacking group called Golden Jackal, and they have managed to break into these supposedly impenetrable systems. Yeah. Not once, Wait. but at least twice that we know of. At least twice. Oh. And that's the thing, right? Like, what's remarkable about this is how they managed to actually bridge that gap between the digital world and and these isolated fortresses of information. So let's unpack that. What we'll be deep diving into today is a bleeping computer article. Uh, It was published on October 8th, 2024, and it details exactly how Golden Jackal pulled off these, uh, these heists. It's a fascinating look at how even the most secure systems can be vulnerable. Yeah. I mean, and the thing is, for a long time, this physical isolation, that was considered like the gold standard, right, for security. Right. But like with any system, vulnerabilities can be exploited. Mm -hmm. And Golden Jackal found a way they had a two-pronged approach. Okay. Utilizing a combination of older tactics and some seriously, like seriously innovative malware. Okay. So how does a group like this even begin to crack a system that's not connected to anything? I mean, it's like trying to pick the lock on a bank vault from a different city. Yeah. Yeah. So their older attacks, those relied on a trio of custom-built malware tools. Golden Dealer, Golden Howl, and Golden Robo catchy names. Yeah. Think of Golden Dealer as a sort of like digital double agent. Yeah. Right? So it infects a computer that does have internet access. Okay. Lies in wait for a USB drive to be plugged in. Hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And then it secretly copies itself and the other tools onto it. So it's using something as, as ordinary as a USB drive as like a Trojan horse? Exactly. Someone thinks they're just transferring some files, but they're unwittingly carrying a like a ticking time bomb of malware? A very, very apt comparison. Now imagine, right? Someone takes that infected USB drive right. and plugs it into an air-gapped system. Right. Thinking they're just, as you said, transferring files. Right, right. But that's when Golden Dealer springs into action, right? It's installing Golden Hell and Golden Robo onto the isolated system. Talk about a rude awakening. You think you're just uploading some documents, and suddenly you've opened the door to a full-blown uh, data breach. Exactly. So what happens next? What do these other tools actually do once they're inside? So Golden Robo, that's the data thief. Okay. Stealthily scours the infected system for specific types of files, mm-hmm. things like documents, images, certificates, and especially encryption keys. Encryption keys, those are like the master keys to a kingdom of data. If they get those, they can potentially unlock even more sensitive information. Exactly. And what about OpenVPN configuration files? I noticed those were uh, specifically mentioned in the article. Yeah, those are those are crucial for establishing, you know, secure connections, especially within a network. Right. And Golden Jackal targeting those suggests they were potentially looking to do more than just steal data. Okay. They're trying to establish a foothold within the system itself to be able to move around undetected and access even more sensitive areas. Mm -hmm. Imagine getting your hands on not just the blueprints to the bank vault, but also the security guard schedule. Right. Now, it's starting to feel less like a heist and more like a hostile takeover at this point. Yeah. They're not just grabbing what they can and running. They're setting up shop. Exactly. Yeah. So Golden Robo is gathering all this data. What happens next? So once that USB drive is plugged back into a computer with Internet access, Golden Dealer swoops in and sends all that stolen data back to Golden Jackal's command center. Wow. And that's not all. Remember... uh Golden Howl. Right. The other tool that hitched a ride on the USB drive. What does that one do? So Golden Howl, right, that acts as a backdoor into the compromise system. Okay. It gives Golden Jackal a way to maintain access, steal even more files, scan for vulnerabilities, and, like, communicate directly with their, their command center. Mm-hmm. And while it can operate on air-gapped systems, it really comes into its own on machines that are connected to the Internet. Okay. Acting as a sort of, you know, digital sleeper agent. So not only are they stealing data, but they're potentially leaving behind a hidden doorway to come and go as they please. Yeah. 
it's it's giving me chills just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. But from what I understand, they didn't stop there, did they? You're right. You're right. Around 2022, they kind of shifted gears. Okay. They adopted a new set of tools that were built on a more um, modular approach. Mm -hmm. So imagine switching from like a one size fits all tool to like a highly specialized toolkit. Right. right. Yeah. This allowed them to kind of spread tasks across different machines, making their operation even more efficient and even hard to detect. So like a Formula One pit crew, each tool with a very specific job to do. Precisely. Very cool. This new toolkit, it includes some updated versions of their old tools, but with some interesting new additions. Like what? They've got Golden Ace. That's their new and improved tool for infecting USB drives. Okay. And then there's Golden USB Copy and its more recent counterpart, Golden USB Go, which focus specifically on collecting the stolen data. So same basic concept as before, using USB drives as these digital couriers. Right. But now just with more advanced tools. Ex exactly. But here's where it gets even more fascinating. Okay. Golden USB, it doesn't rely on those encrypted configuration files like its predecessor did. Right. It operates on hard-coded instructions, yeah. zeroing in on recently modified files that are smaller than 20 megabytes. Okay, now that's just crafty. No suspicious configuration files hanging around to tip off security researchers. It's like it's like wiping away your fingerprints at a crime scene. An apt analogy. I like that one. And and it doesn't stop there. Oh no. Golden Usgo is programmed to look for files that contain specific keywords like pass, login, or key. Mm -hmm. And it targets file types like PDFs and Word documents where, you know, sensitive information is often stored. Wow, they're not leaving anything to chance, are they? It's like they're, I don't know, reading our minds, right. or at least our, our digital footprints. Yeah, exactly. Anything else in their arsenal that kind of stands out? Absolutely. They developed a Golden Blacklist and its Python counterpart, Golden Buy Blacklist. Mm -hmm. These tools are all about stealth. So they filter and archive specific emails before they're actually sent out, okay. making sure only the most valuable intelligence is taken. So instead of swiping everything, they're carefully curating their collection, like art thieves, after a very specific masterpiece. They only want the most valuable pieces. <laughs> wow. Golden Jackal is demonstrating like an impressive level of, of organization and sophistication in their approach. Mm -hmm. And their toolkit also includes Golden Mailer, which, as the name suggests, is used to email the stolen data, and Golden Drive, mm -hmm. which uses cloud storage for exfiltration. They've got a tool for every stage of the operation. They do. It's it's almost elegant in a terrifying kind of way. It is, yeah. But but let's not forget the most important question here. Yeah. What's the point of all this effort? What oh. what are they after? What are they trying to get? Well, the bleeping computer article, it details that they were after highly sensitive data. Like what? Emails, encryption keys, mm. you know, and more. Mm. And remember how we were talking about Golden Robo specifically targeting those open VPN configuration files. Yeah, yeah. That strongly suggests that they're after more than just data. Okay. They're trying to gain, like, deeper access to networks, mm -hmm. be able to move laterally within these organizations, mm -hmm. and potentially even control critical systems. So not just stealing the blueprints to the vault, but taking control of the entire security system. Exactly. That that elevates this from a data breach to a potential national security threat. Exactly. And, and the fact that they are targeting government and diplomatic entities. That points to one likely motive. Which is? Espionage. It's espionage. Wow. They're after information that could give them a strategic advantage. Okay. Which begs the question, if a group like this can breach systems that are thought to be completely isolated, right. what does that mean for cybersecurity in general? Are we, are we living in a digital world where no information is truly safe? It's... It's a chilling thought, isn't it? The very foundation of air gap security, it's built on this, this this physical isolation. Right. And Golden Jackal has exposed that. Even that is no longer a guarantee. Wow. But but this doesn't mean that, you know, we should just despair. Okay. It means we need to rethink our approach to security. So what does that look like? If if building stronger walls isn't enough, then what can we do to protect ourselves in this this new age of digital espionage? It's it's no longer enough to rely solely on, like, static defenses. Okay. We need to anticipate, adapt, and be one step ahead. Okay. And that brings us to the crux of the matter. Okay. How do we fortify our digital fortresses against such, you know, cunning adversaries? Let's explore that further. What are the takeaways uh, for organizations, especially those dealing with, you know, super sensitive information? Well, it, it all circles back to, you know, like a really crucial point. Nope. 
cybersecurity, it's not about building like these impenetrable walls, right? right? It's about fostering a security posture that anticipates and mitigates threats, even those that, that might seem impossible, right? So less about building a bigger batter vault and more about outsmarting the thieves before they even think about targeting you? Exactly. And and this means robust security awareness training for employees, you yeah. know? Strict access controls, regular security audits. Okay. But perhaps most crucial is cultivating this culture of constant vigilance. Okay. Because Golden Jackal's success, it hinges on exploiting the smallest cracks in our in our digital armor. It's it's a sobering reminder that even a simple oversight, like leaving a USB drive unattended, could be like the opening that a group like this needs. Right. Talk about high stakes. Mm -hmm. It seems like these guys are always like a step ahead, constantly evolving their methods. Yeah. Is there any way to to truly stay ahead of such a determined and resourceful adversary? Well, it's a it's a constant arms race, right? Right. We as defenders need to be just as relentless in updating our strategies. And this means like staying informed about the latest threats, sharing information with other organizations, mm -hmm. investing in cutting edge, you know, security technologies. Right. But it also comes down to something it's something a bit more fundamental. Which is critical thinking. So not just relying on the latest tools and technologies, but constantly questioning like our own assumptions and looking for vulnerabilities, maybe even in our own thinking. Precisely. We need to approach cybersecurity with a healthy dose of paranoia, always asking ourselves, what if? Okay. What if someone found a way to bypass our security measures? Mm -hmm. What if an attacker got their hands on an employee's login credentials? Oh, right. By constantly like challenging our assumptions and preparing for, for the unexpected, we can build a more resilient uh, digital infrastructure. It's It's like that old saying, trust but verify, or in this case, trust no USB drive ever. Right. But on a more serious note, this really highlights the importance of cybersecurity awareness, not just for, you know, large organizations, but for for individuals as well. Absolutely, because everyone has a role to play in this digital ecosystem. Mm. Understanding the basics of online safety, practicing good password hygiene, and just being like cautious about suspicious emails or or links can go a long way in, in preventing these types of attacks. It's it's like locking your front door, even if you live in like a really safe neighborhood. Right. You're not being paranoid. You're just being cautious. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. This deep dive into Golden Jackal's activities has been uh, eye-opening to say the least. Yeah. If there's one key takeaway for our listeners, it's that in the digital age, knowledge is power and complacency. Complacency can be our Achilles heel. Well said. By staying informed, being proactive, and adopting this mindset of, of continuous learning, we can all, all contribute to uh, a safer and more secure uh, digital world. So what does this all mean for you, dear listener? It means staying informed about these evolving threats. It's crucial. It mm -hmm. means questioning assumptions about security, especially when it comes to sensitive information. And it means being proactive and implementing strong security measures, even if you think your systems are already secure, because as we've learned from Golden Jackal, no system is truly impenetrable. That's right. In a world where data is the new gold, the race is on to protect it. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the finish line keeps moving. It does. It does. Stay vigilant, stay informed and stay ahead of the game.